Morning, guys. Welcome to Story Time, Mr. C. Uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yesterday's story with those, those couple of rap bag superheroes, Captain America's that were going past me and my story. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Arch Pop had a great time. So I hope you enjoyed it too. Reading uh, The Very Super Bear, which is a great, a great story by Nick Bland. Today's story is going to be The Very Sleepy Bear, which we'll get to. Now, today's story, unfortunately, today's story is not live. I've, I've recorded this uh, a couple of hours before. Um, just I have lots on today. Um, so I do apologise. There won't be any comments. I'll be able to reply to them. But uh, thank you for those people who watch each day. I really do enjoy it. I've had some fantastic feedback. So thank you, guys. Um, it, it's really nice to, to hear and see. So I appreciate it. So today's story, no birthdays on Compass either. I, I didn't notice. Um, but if there is one, then I have I'll have ignored. Happy birthday to you or someone in your family. And I'll get into the story because uh, it is a very busy day. Okay, let's have a look. The very sleepy bear. Now, hang on, you're going to have to help me out here. We're going to have to do our click in three seconds. Here we go, ready? Three, two, one. Ah, there we go. It's been working beautifully. The Very Sleepy Bear by Nick Bland. Let's have a look at the blurb on the back. On a jingle jangle mountain, as the snow fell on the rocks, a bear was being followed by a very sneaky fox. But bear was in a hurry. He was running very late. Winter had arrived, and it was time to hibernate. I wonder if you know what hibernate is. Yeah. And a really big snooze during winter. Something I'd like to do. I'm not a big winter fan myself. Prefer this much prefer the summer. Oh, watch that microphone. Okay, the very sleepy bear. Oh, very sleepy bear. Can you still see that nicely? I think we can. Winter had come early and bear was running late. He was feeling very sleepy. It was time to hibernate. He hurried down the mountain past the icy rocks and never even noticed a rather sneaky fox. There he is. We spotted him. At last he reached his cosy cave just in time for bed. Then Fox appeared from nowhere. Good afternoon, he said. I couldn't help but notice that your cave is very small. There's hardly any room here to hibernate at all. A great big bear like you, said Fox, so big, strong and brave. A creature so magnificent deserves a bigger cave. Yeah, this squashy. Or cosy, perhaps. A bigger cave? For me? Oh, yawned Bear. Perhaps you could be right. I must admit this cave is getting rather tight. Today's your lucky day, said Fox. I've just the cave for you. I'll even help you pack, he said. I've nothing else to do. What's Fox up to? Foxes are quite cunning. I wonder what he's thinking. So Bear picked up his suitcase and he gave a little wave and left his cosy home behind to find a bigger cave. Maybe Fox is just being helpful. Forget your little cave, said Fox. This huge one could be yours. There's heaps of room to hibernate. It's even got two doors. Two doors, train tracks. I don't know. I'm not sure that's quite a cave. It's absolutely waterproof, free from snow and rain. And once a day at two o'clock, you get to see... Uh-oh. Whoosh! A train! No, that's, no, I don't think that's quite safe. That's not good for Bear. Fox was smiling nervously and Bear just shook his head. I'm feeling very sleepy. I'm going home, he said. But you're so very big, said Fox, and your cave's so very small. You really need a bigger cave, a cave that's nice and... Hmm, what's it going to be? Tall. This one's made of solid wood and not a train in sight. Well, that looks a bit cosier than these other ones. And never mind the bats, said Fox. They all go out at night. Fox was smiling nervously and Bear just shook his head. I'm feeling very sleepy. I'm going home, he said. But wait, there is another cave. If that's not one for you. The real estate agent, is he, Fox? What's in it for him? It's got a sandy floor, said Fox. And a lovely ocean view. Oh, it does look quite nice. I'll take it, said the sleepy bear, and shook the fox's hand. He took his favourite pillow out and curled up in the sand. But just as Bear was nodding off inside his brand new cave, there came a splishy, splashy sound, and then there came... Uh-oh. A 
a wave. Oh, goodness. Bear was cold and cranky and very, very tired. He packed his little suitcase up. I'm going home. He sighed. Oh, look at him. Poor fella. When Bear arrived back home at last, ready for his bed, Fox and all his little friends were living there instead. Ah, that's what Fox was up to. Please don't throw us out, said Fox. We're also very small. You hardly even notice that we're living here at all. Well, today's your lucky day, said Bear, as he lay upon the floor. Wake me up in spring, he said. And by the way, hmm, I'm thinking something that rhymes with floor that you do when you sleep. I snore. Snore, snore, snore. And look, poor fox. Had to move outside. The snoring was too great. Hope not in your house snores. No, that's not good if they do. Disrupt everyone's sleep if they snore. Okay, that's it. Very sleepy bear. Hope you enjoyed that story, guys. Let's flick our camera back. Ready? Three, two, one. There we go. Fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed the story. Sorry that I wasn't reading live today, um, but at least there's a story up there at some stage. You can. I'll, I'll make sure I, I get it up there so you can um, you can break up your day in, in between all your, your fantastic remote learning. So thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Uh, no story time tomorrow. I'm really sorry. I'm not even going to have time to record one. I apologise. The rest of today is um, incredibly busy for me, and tomorrow uh, I am I'm fully booked. So I do apologise. But I will be back Thursday for story time with Mr. C, and I might read. I might go the very noisy bear by Nick Bland on Thursday. Okay. Have a great day. See you guys. Thank you.